to 
Beautiful Mary, 
sa stand mo. In the name of the Father, and the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat, and welcome to the Minor Basilica of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag. My dear friends, my dear brothers and sisters, once again as we begin our celebration, we call to mind our shortcomings, our infidelities, for the many times that we have failed to follow the Lord and become His disciples, we ask pardon. All together we say, I confess. So mighty well, God, and, and to you, my, my brothers, brothers and sisters, and sisters that, that I have greatly great sinned in my thoughts and in my, and in my words, in, in what, what I have done, and in what, what I have failed to do. to do. Through my fault, through, through my fault, fault through, through my most grievous fault. fault. And therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. God in the highest. Amen. 
Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Human knowledge is limited, especially in regard to discovering God's will and plan. The Church ought to pray for the spirit of wisdom, which is God's gift. A reading from the Book of Wisdom Who can know God's counsel, or who can conceive what the Lord intends? For the de deliberations of mortals are timid and unsure are our plans. For the corruptible body burdens the soul, and the earthen shelter weighs down the mind that has many concern. And scarce do we guess the things on earth, and what is within our grasp we find with difficulty. But when things are in heaven, who can search them out? Or whoever knew your counsel, except you had given wisdom and sent your Holy Spirit from on high. And thus were the paths of those on earth made straight. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Shout 
gracious care of the Lord our God be ours. Prosper the work of our hands for us. Prosper the work of our hands. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. Paul sends back to Philemon his runaway slave, Onesimus, but asks the Christian master to treat the servant as a brother. The salvation of Christ eliminates the division between the slave and the free, the poor and the rich. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Philemon. I, Paul, an old man, and now also a prisoner for Christ Jesus, urge you on behalf of my child Onesimus, whose father I have become in my imprisonment. I am sending him, that is, my own heart, back to you. I should have liked to retain him for myself, so that he might serve me on your behalf. In my imprisonment for the gospel, but I did not want to do anything without your consent so that the good you do might not be forced, but voluntary. Perhaps this is why he was away from you for a while, that you might have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a brother, beloved especially to me but even more so to you as a man and in the Lord. So if you regard me as a partner, welcome him as you would me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Let your face shine upon your servant and teach me your laws. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Great crowds were troubling with Jesus, and he turned and addressed them. If anyone comes to me without hating his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Which of you, wishing to construct a tower, does not first sit down and calculate the cost to see if there is enough for its completion. Otherwise, after laying the foundation and finding himself unable to finish the work, the onlookers should laugh at him and say, this one began to build but did not have the resources to finish. Or what king marching into battle would not first sit down and decide whether with 10,000 troops he can successfully oppose another king advancing upon him with 20,000 troops. But if not, while he is still far away, he will send a delegation to ask for peace of terms. In the same way, any one of you who does not renounce all his possessions cannot be my disciple. My dear friends, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Sa isang opening scene ng bagong uh, TV series, The Lord of the Rings, merong isang bata gumagawa ng bangkang papel. 
At yung mga kapwa niya bata ay pinapanood siya at tinatanong tapos na ba yan? At nung makitang tapos na, ilinagay niya yung bangka doon sa river, sa tubig. At ang tanong sa kanya, is it going to float? Lulutang ba yan? And she answered, it's not simply going to float. Hindi lang yan lulutang, it will sail. I remember that when reading the gospel because it tells us about the identity of us Christians. Ano tayo? Lulutang lang ba? O are we meant to sail? Kaya nga nung kinukwento ko itong, itong uh, yung, yung opening scene na yon at saka yung gospel ngayon sa isang kaibigan, sa bagay, totoo naman yan. Marami talaga mga Kristiyanong lutang lang. No? Masakit yon, but thinking inside, reflecting inside, while it, it might be true, but that's not who we are and that's not our destiny. Because as Christians, we're not simply called to float, but we are, we are called to sail. In the gospel that we read today, it's about choices. Why sailing and not simply floating? Kasi alam naman natin na ang buhay krisyano ay hindi laging masaya. Ito'y punong-puno ng mga pagsubok, ito'y punong-puno ng mga challenges, ito'y punong-puno ng mga tough decisions. Anong unahin, anong gagawin? May i-give up, merong i-retain, mag-a-abroad, mag stay sa Pilipinas, magtitiis pa o bibigay na. Ang daming tough decisions na kailangan nating gawin. Ang dami nating choices. Buti na lang kung ang choices na nasa harap lang natin ay magaan. E merong mga pagkakataon na may mga choices tayo na kailangan gawin na masakit. Mahirap na minsan, what is on the line ay ang pagsunod natin sa ating Panginoon. Life ay full ng mga tough choices. Kaya nga, napakahalaga na malinaw kung sino tayo, kung ano tayo, anong misyon natin, anong direksyon natin, anong vision natin, at napakahalaga din na yung mga pinangahawakan natin mga values ay buo, ay buo. Uh, marami pong mga organisasyon, mga entities, uh, hindi lang school, kundi mga corporation, ang nagkakaroon ng vision, mission, at yung tinatawag na corporate values. Sapagkat yung mission ay ito yung nagsasabi kung ano ka, ay eh ako'y kristyano. Anong vision ng kumpanya sa pagiging krisyano? Anong direksyon mo? Anong vision mo? Nakatatapos pa lang po namin ng planning. And then yung, uh, yung head po ng religious affairs nung isang school po namin ay nagsalita. At sabi niya, at lang naman ang mission ng aking departamento. Ang madala, ang buong paaralan at buong mag-aaral sa pintuan ng langit. Malinaw. Yun ang misyon. At yun ang direksyon. Malinaw ang misyon, malinaw ang direksyon. Sa ating buhay, ganun din po. Kaya nga sa binasa nating Ibanghelyo, sabi ng ating Panginoon, you will need to make tough choices and difficult choices. Kaya nga ginamit niya yung salitang hate. ba? Diba? Ang salitang hate ay isang napakamabi, napakabigat. When somebody tells you, I hate you, it is something that is painful and it's something that is also heavy. When somebody tells you, hate. But in the gospel, the Lord is actually telling us about our core value. That at the end of the day, intak yun at yun yung pinahahalagahan. Mahalaga yun sapagkat it tells us, it keeps us our own identity. Kung ano tayo bilang mga Kristiyano. May mga bagay na po pwede nating pagbigyan. May mga bagay na po pwede nating i-tolerate. 
But, sa, but at the end of the day, yung identity natin bilang Krisyano should be kept intact. About may mga po pwede tayong i-compromise. Sige na nga, pagbigyan na. Pero pagdating dito, ah, hindi ko na yan po pwedeng, uh, pwedeng i-tolerate sapagkat hindi na ako yan. Di ba naririnig nyo minsan yung mga sarili nyo yung ganyan? Hindi ko na yan po pwedeng i-tolerate sapagkat hindi na yan yung pinaniniwalaan ko. Magbabago na ako at ayaw mong magbago ako yung identity ko. My dear friends, in the gospel that we read today, we are being reminded that as disciples of Christ, we will really need to make tough choices and difficult choices. And sometimes, we will draw the line because that's how we're going to keep our identity as disciples of Christ. Ano kaya tayo? Kristiyanong lutang or Kristiyanong sailing even to the difficult parts ng buhay ng pagiging disipulo ng ating Panginoon. Sana yung huli. Kindly all stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnated of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, was spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Eternal Father, through your Son, you enable us to carry our cross and become your faithful disciples. Shine your face upon us and help us understand your wisdom as we say, Father, teach us your ways. Father, teach us your ways. For the Church, may Pope Francis, bishops, priests, deacons, and us, the lay faithful, align our will to your will in our discernment and service toward each other and all people of goodwill. We pray. Father, teach us your ways. For all who serve in the government, guide them that they may always choose the path of discipleship in the policies they make and their compassionate implementation of the Constitution. We, we pray. Father, teach us your ways. For many of us gathered today who are undergoing great difficulties, may we find consolation in the presence of the people we love. Move the people we encounter towards <coughs> providing necessary help that all of us may be empowered towards discipleship. We pray. Father, teach us your ways. For our departed loved ones, welcome them back into your loving arms, especially those who have remained faithful disciples to you in their lifetime here on earth. We pray. Father, teach us your ways. We also pray in a very special way for all the devotees of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag for their health, for their welfare, and then for their safety, we pray to the Lord. Father, teach us your ways. And we pause for a while, and in silence, you may now offer your personal intention.
Almighty Father, direct we beseech you all our decisions and actions so that, like your Son, we may remain faithful in loving obedience to your eternal will, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Pray, my dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy Church. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, you may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly really right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gather them again to yourself, that a people form as one by the unity of the Trinity, made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. May call it therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take these, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you.
in a similar way when supper was ended. He took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many. For the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Socrates, our Archbishop, Fidelis, our Auxiliary Bishop, Gerard, the Master of the Order of Preachers, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Once again, as a Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <laughs> 
For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I live you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We offer to one another the sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you. My dear friends, my dear brothers and sisters, behold our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but, but only, only say the, the word, word and my soul shall be healed.
Please stand. Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the announcement. Dear devotees of Our Lady of Manawag, the October Feast of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag will be on October 2, 2022. We invite you to participate in our Novena Masses, which will start from September 23 to October 1, 2022. If you wish to sponsor one or several Masses, you may fill out the form at the counters for Masses area and submit it with your donation where you will be provided with an acknowledgement receipt. Or you may visit our website, www.manawagminorbasilica.org, for the online pamisa. All names of donors and sponsors will appear in the electronic souvenir program. Thank you very much for your continued support. Please stand. Before I give the final blessing, maraming salamat po sa pagdalaw ninyo sa Minor Basilica of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag at sa pakikiisa po ninyo sa Banal na Misa. Makakaasa po kayo ng patuloy na pagdarasal po namin magmula dito at para sa mga diboto ng mahal na ina, lalong-lalo na yung mga dumaraan sa mga pagsubok at may mga desisyon, mabigat na desisyon na kailangang gawin at yung mga may mga sakit, may mga karamdaman. We continue to pray also for each other. Sa darating po na fiesta, uh, ay uh, magkakaroon po tayo ng prosesyon. So kaya sa arinawa naman po ay, uh, ay uh, makadalo kayo sa, sa araw po ng kapisahan. Kahapon po, uh, first Saturday, at uh, naibalik na rin po natin ang ating dawn uh, rosary and then dawn mass po, uh, dawn procession po kahapon. Kaya kahit na maulan, eh, marami pa rin ang uh, mga nag-join at nakiisa uh, at nag-participate sa ating celebration. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May the God of all consolation order your days in His peace and grant you the gifts of His blessing. Amen. May He free you always from every distress and confirm your hearts in His love. Amen. So that on this life's journey, you may be effective in good works, rich in the gifts of hope, faith, and charity, and may come happily to eternal life. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord through one another. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, God. to God. Muli po, we shall now say the prayer for the blessing ng mga may sakit. Andito sa simbahan, nasa bahay, mga relatives at kaibigan natin, pagdasal po natin. And also afterwards, we will say the prayer for the blessing ng religious articles. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. God, our Almighty Father, by your blessing, you give us strength and support in our frailty. Turn with kindness so the sick brothers and sisters, freedom from all illness, and restore them to good health through the intercession of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, so that in the sure knowledge of your goodness, they will gratefully bless your holy name. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. For your religious articles, we bless them. In memory of the mysteries of the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the honor and glory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of Christ, Mother of the Church, Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, may your religious articles be blessed and made holy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.